Dasa Bailey asks for a critique on this particular image. This is her first attempt at this painting style and she has done an exceptionally good job for the first attempt. I think the painting stands very well on its own, but if it was mine, these are some of the techniques I might engage. First, I would duplicate the image, then I would add a background. We're always better to try and work on a background rather than on the original. I would go on over and select my mixing brush and then I'm going to go up and I'm going to pick a brush that has a textured edge. I like the fan brushes but I can't seem to locate them. There they are. We'll try this one. Now you can change the size of the brush and that's one of the main things we're going to use to control how this works. I'm going to soften as many edges as possible. You want things to get lighter as you move away. So what I'm going to do is just start trying to soften this edge and make it a little bit more irregular. I'm setting the brush down and I'm pivoting it, I'm not pulling it. And so it's actually blending the colors, two colors together. Now, you have to be conscious of uh, what's happening in your image when you're working your background. We can see that the light source is high in from this edge. So this area actually should be lighter. So I'm just going to pull some of the color from the background into here and then just mix it up a little bit. And this will give us a better intent for the direction of the light. These little cues to the subconscious are what give the painting realism. And when you don't pay attention to them, that's when paintings tend not to work. And I speak of this as a painting, I mean, and that's the way you have to think. You have to think as if, well, I'm painting this image. I'm actually taking it from the very beginning, and I have to make sure that everything works. I'm having fun with my brush strokes. You, know, you, you want to make them expressive even in backgrounds and things like this. This is where your style will start to show is how you use the brush. Okay. I'll pull this down this way a little bit. Get rid of that edge. It doesn't matter what brush you pick either. I mean, you can do this with anyone. It just, whatever brush you pick sort of determines the character of the particular image you're going to work on. Okay, now we've gotten the background broken down. Now what we're going to do is we're going to go in and try and break up all of the solid edges in the image. So I'm going to make my brush smaller and I'm going to move in so I can see what I'm doing. Now what we want to do is try and make this look more like a painting at this point. We're going to reveal the detail. We're going to bring the detail back. Okay, so what we're going to do is I'm actually going to go in and work the edges. I want to try and blend any edge that I can so that it's soft. I don't want to obscure that edge, but I want to make that edge so that it isn't quite as hard. So it blends in with what's happening in the background. So the background is not separate, but integrated. Now, like, there's a little too much white down in here, so I'm actually going to just pull some of the yellow out of his face and then get it down in here and move it around a little bit. Just got to go in and try and soften up all of these edges. And you see, I can pull that into there if I want the hair color to go in that direction. That's when you pull the brushes, when you want to move color. If you want to just soften color, you just slightly rotate the brush.
So we're just going to go around. Now we get out here to the bigger areas, we can be much more expressive about what we're doing. Now, you have to know what you're going to, where you're going to place the emphasis. A good painting always directs the eye to what the artist wants the viewer to see. And the difference between a photograph and a painting is that most times in photographs, we're trying to keep everything as sharp as possible and you now we're looking for detail. But with this particular technique of painting, you're actually trying to obscure detail and only put the detail where you want the eye to go. The eye will be attracted to a sharp edge over a soft edge. So this is why we want to work these edges so that they're all soft and blurred. Okay, so that's why I'm working these edges You see there's a hard edge there, so we want to soften that one. There's a hard edge there, hard edge there. I'm going to zoom back out so I can see more of the image. Okay, let's get the tool. See, now it should start to look more like a painting than a photograph. And so I can go in and work the edges if I want. And move the color around. It doesn't have to be where it was in the photographs, like how we brought the color down in there. I'm going to bring a little bit of pink out into his nose. There we go, just to make that highlight. And the ear is a little hot, so we're going to tone that down. Okay, I need to soften this stuff here. Now, as I was talking about, you have to determine where you're going to place the detail, because that's where the eye will go. And what I'm looking at is I want the detail to be in his face and in the fret on the guitar. And that's going to create a nice line. And we'll bring the line down the arm into here. So what we're going to do is we'll, we'll bring detail back into this area, detail across the edge of this arm, into here, up and down the fretboard, his fingers, and the adjustment pegs. And that's what will control where the eye goes. Now, before we do that, we have to make a new layer. So there's a nice little technique I learned just recently is that if you hold down the option key make sure the top layer is selected go on up here and go down to merge visible it makes a copy of everything below it okay so we now have a solid copy of what's here now what we want to do is we want to bring the detail from this image back up through so I'm going to take this drag it up and put it right underneath there and then I'm going to click here and I'm going to put a mask on there. Now, whatever we paint with black here is going to reveal what's underneath and we can control that. So I've still got the, I, I can't do this with the mixing brush. I have to use a regular brush. So I'm going back to the regular brush. I still have the same fan brush, fan brush selected and I need black down here. Now, we want to reveal things slowly. We want to you know, have, the, have it come forward. So we do that by changing the opacity up here. And I'm going to set it at a fairly low opacity. And you may not even think we're doing anything in the beginning here. But you'll see how it works as we go along. OK, so we've got it here. I've got the brush selected. I've got this on black. Oops, something. Oh, and I've got this selected. Oops, I click on my brush. Okay, and I have the opacity at 34. Now I'm just going to take this and I want the detail to move in. And you can see I'm just getting a light gray over here. And what that's doing is it's just revealing a little of this detail. And so I'm going to work. Remember, I want this line right here to be where it's going to go. And I'm going to bring a little bit of the shirt back in, some of his shoulder and the neck. Now you can see it's starting to work. Okay, now I want to reveal even more detail, so I'm going to take my opacity up about 70. And now I'm going to come in and work the face. 
There are the lips, they're coming up, those are important. There are the eyes, we want some of the detail in the hat up here to try and maintain this line leading from his eye down to the fretboard. Bring a little detail in in a few of the other spots. Now I'm going to really go for it. I want to pull all of the detail I can up through this. So I'm going to take it up to 100%. Go in now and work his eye, the nose, the lips, a little bit of the ear. This line right here and the line on the arm. Come into the fingers, catch the shadow, catch this edge of the guitar, catch that edge. Come on up here and really reveal these pegs because they have a nice bright line on them. And there you go. Need more on the eyes, I think, so I'll just come in. And there we go. Now, I'm again going to make an, a layer that merges all of these together. So I'm going to hold down the Option key, go on up, say Merge Visible. And now I'm just going to turn all of these off so we can compare the difference. Oops, let's zoom out so we can see the whole thing. Now if I think I've brought too much in or if I want to change things, I can go in with white here, take the brush and I can soften certain areas back up. I can bring it back. And that's the nice thing about using this mask and the layers is that you have the ability to change your mind. So there it is. Now, once you get to this point, you may want to add a texture or a pattern. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go down here and click on the black and white circle go to Pattern. And in my Patterns palette up here, I have several patterns. I'm going to pick this one. And I can change the coarseness of that pattern by changing the slider. Then I just say OK. Now this is here. You can't see through it until you adjust your blending mode. So I'm going to go on up here. These are the three that I usually use. Darken, Multiply, and Burn. Okay, multiply looks the best in this one. Now, the texture is overpowering the image, so you just go up here to opaque, opacity, and you take it down. Okay, once you're done with that, there's one final step that I usually do. I come on down, I go to brightness and contrast, and I just tweak the image. So I get the brightness that I want. Uh, right about there. And again, because this is on a layer, you can turn it on and off. And that's it. That's some of the things that I would do with a different interpretation of the already good image you had.